In today's video, I'm going to be giving my review of the Magnolia Dress by Dear and Dell. Come check it out. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're joining us for the first time, hi, my name is T and this is my channel Crumpets Tea and Sewing. I also go by that handle over on Instagram. You can check links to my Instagram, blog, and Facebook account in my description box. And you could go over and give me a follow and a like on some of my content over on those accounts. Okay, so let's talk about the Deer and Doe Magnolia dress. So, as you can tell by the smile on my face, I am in love with this dress. I'm in love with the dress pattern and I am in love with the fabric. And I'm going to give you all the details on the fabric the pattern everything so sit back relax get yourself a snack and enjoy this video all right so let's first start with the features of the pattern there are a lot of features in this pattern this is a pattern that is for intermediate sewists so just keep that in mind if you are in the beginning stages or the advanced beginning stages you might want to wait until you sew a few dresses before you you try this particular uh, pattern because it is an intermediate pattern so it features two different skirt lengths so you can make a dress that comes up about around the knee area and then there's a long maxi dress as well it features side slits in the front for the maxi length version so you're going to have a side slit on the right of the dress and a side slit on the left of the dress as well it also features so the front of the skirt has three panels so you have your front skirt which is cut on fold and then you have your two side skirt pieces then you have your back which is cut on fold and then you have your two side back pieces so you have a total of six panels for this particular dress it has princess seams which i absolutely love because it's really it's really easy to get a really nice fit when you have princess seams it features a wrap bodice and it also features a side zipper and that zipper is going to be placed on the left side of the body and it I think it starts somewhere around the 5 eighths of an inch mark like really I think it's like below 5 eighths of an inch under your underarm seam and it extends down into the hip area and I think it goes down the dress about six or seven inches um, past the bodice area it also has a midriff I don't know if I said that or not but it has a midriff and that midriff is going to go um, in between the bodice and the skirt obviously and you have that midriff for the front and the back you also have the option to insert a tie belt so that tie belt is going to be sewn on your side seams and after you saw after you sew the belt in the side seams it's supposed to go uh, toward the back so you're going to pull the ties towards the back and you tie your tie in the back Let's so that's about the size range so the size range it's uh the size is in european standard sizes and that's a 34 to 46 and i'll give you the inches the finished garment measurements for the u.s sizes and i feel like that's the only thing that uh, is a drawback for me with this pattern is the size is not as inclusive and i had to so the largest size i didn't have to but after i tell you all the measurements and things like that and then i tell you the size that i chose you'll understand why so let me go ahead and tell you what the u.s sizes are so for a bus and this is a, a size range i'm not giving you all the sizes so for a bus you're looking at the uh, at the starting point it's 33 and 7 8 7 inch and that's for the finished measurements for the bus and it goes up to a 43 and a quarter of an inch so it's not very size inclusive for the waist is 25 and a quarter of an inch for the waist and that's the starting point and then it goes up to a 34 and 5 8 7 inch for the waist and then for the hips is 46 inches for the hips that's the starting point and then it goes up to a 55 and a half 
uh, inches for the hips. So again, it's not very size inclusive. And so that's the only drawback that I did not like about the pattern, but everything else sewed up really well. I didn't have to do any adjustments like my regular standard adjustments, like my bust adjustments, my uh, sloping shoulder adjustments, bicep adjustments. I didn't have to do any of those adjustments. And so that's why I was really excited and pleased with it. Um, the only adjustment that I did was I had to uh, lengthen the waistline, I believe. Yeah, I think I had to lengthen the waistline because the waistline was too high up on me and it was like right underneath my boobs. And so I had to lengthen the waistline just a bit. But that's the only uh, adjustment that I had to do on the flat pattern for uh, for like my bust or anything like that like any modifications or alterations for that particular uh area now the fabric requirements for this if you choose view a which is the shorter sorry the longer version you're looking at about five yards of fabric and that's without the lining so just keep that in mind that's if you're not doing a lining because this again this pattern does not call for a lining so if you're not using a lining this pattern is going to be between four and five yards of fabric. Now, I had to shorten my garment by seven inches. So again, you all know when I work with these patterns that have like maxi dresses, like maxi dress patterns that have really long skirts in them, I usually can save a ton of fabric because the measurements are generally for tall women uh, anywhere from like five, six, and up. So I was able to save a lot of fabric that way. And again, I, I believe I took off like seven inches for my panels. So that was really, that was like a, I saved a lot of fabric. So the shell of my garment or the outside of my garment was it took about four yards to make it actually it took more like three and a half yards to make this dress so not not that much at all for the lining part of the garment i used i didn't have enough fabric for the lining of the garment and so i had to use two different color fabrics so i used a blue lining and a pink lining and I'll, again i'll show you what that looks like and so i was just getting like creative with it and some of the panels are blue some of the panels are um pink so that i can actually make up that so i could make up that difference to be able to have a lining so that's what i did for the lining part of the garment and I omitted the bias uh, tape. And like I said before, the reason why I did that is because I lined the garment. And so I just, um, I just um, sewed the lining and the, the outside of the garment uh, together with right size facing. And then I turned, after I sewed it together, I flipped the lining on the inside, pressed it down, and then top stitched. I think in the future I would use bias binding just for the neckline or I would flip this portion inward and then stitch it down just because I forgot to account for the fact that I needed to uh, take out that seam allowance and so it's it's not gaping but it does have a little bit of extra fabric there and that's probably because I needed to turn it inward and uh, and take out that seam allowance that was created for the garment so that's the only issue that i had with the pattern and it's not really that much of an issue as you can see it looks great on me all right so for the sizes in terms of what i chose i chose a size 46 so that is the largest size on the pattern and that's a finished measurement of 43 and a quarter of an inch for the bust 34 and 5 eighths of an inch for the waist and 55 and a half inches for the hips. Now, those sizes are quite big for me. So my bust, my finished bust measurement is a 39. My finished waist measurement is about a 31 to a 32. And my finished hip measurement is about a 41 and a half to about a 42. So the reason why I selected the largest size of the pattern is because 
I didn't want to make any mistakes and I did one mock-up of the garment and I felt like the 40 the 43 for the bust was pretty accurate and it was pretty good for that size giving me about a three to four inch uh, ease in the bust and in the waist so and then for the waist I usually like my waist fitted however since there is a tie belt that you can sew on the garment and push or uh, take that to the back and tighten the tie belt at the back I felt like I would be able to take any excess fabric and kind of like gather that to the back of the dress and it'll still look very fitted and then that way if I fluctuate in weight if I go up an inch or two I still have room to fit the the garment so I felt like sewing the tie belt on would give me an advantage of keeping the garment longer if I gained weight so that's one of the reasons why I decided to sew up a size instead of sewing my actual size or go down or whatever so that's one of the reasons why I chose that now I could go to the size below which is the 44 all right so for the fabric this fabric was sponsored to me by Minerva so this is a Minerva make and I will make sure that I put a link in my description box below to the blog portion of this so that you could go over and read the blog and see the photos and all that stuff so even though you see the photos in this video if you want to have quick access for any reason to look at or read my blog and then also look at the photos you'll go ahead and click the link below and go ahead and go over to the Minerva site and you can see this make on the Minerva site as well so the fabric is a cotton lawn it's a non-scratch fabric like i mentioned before it's very lightweight so you might need to line it it just depends on what you make with it and what you what your your style is and it also comes in two two other colors so this one is a blue this is a, a really nice light sky blue and then it has a uh, pink and purple flowers on it but you can also get this in a green color and a lavender color as well so i really like those options as well so overall i really love this magnolia dress i know that i'm going to get a lot of wear out of it oh i didn't tell you about the sleeve so i decided to go with the maxi length version of the dress and i also went with the sleeve the uh, flutter sleeve So yeah, I went with the maxi length version, flutter sleeves. Uh, I added the tie belt to the dress. I did not do the side slits. I decided to just go ahead and sew the seam of the garment, like sew it all the way down. I just decided not to do the side slits because I lined the garment and I didn't want the, the lining to show. So I just went ahead and sewed the, the garment without the side slits. And I did a really narrow hem for the sleeves as well as for the skirt. And I think that this is a really nice, cool dress that you can wear like um, on the beach or something like that. And so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make this dress this year. And it's been on my, my list for two years now. So I'm really happy that I made it. And I like the results. I like the way that it turned out. I'm going to make another one, but I want to make the shorter version without a lining and I want to also make a version with long sleeves as well so probably for like late fall early winter I'll make the longer sleeve version as well so I have fun with this make definitely recommend it like I said the only drawback for me is that it's not size inclusive but other than that I really love this particular pattern I didn't have any problems with it the only alteration, like I said, that I had to make, or adjustment, I should say, that I had to make is the the waistline. But other than that, everything fit perfectly, perfectly. I could not be any more happier with this garment. So that's my review of the dress. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure that you leave them in the comment section below.
All right, everyone, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you did, please make sure that you give this video a big like. If you have not done so already, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell to receive notifications of all my videos when I post them. All right, everyone, thank you for tuning in and I hope you all have a beautiful, happy sewing week. And until next time, stay creative. Bye.